morning. On behalf of the worship committee, I'm delighted this morning to introduce to you David Faber. David is a licensed lay worship leader. He's a student at St. Stephen's College in the Master of Theological Studies program, and he's been affirmed for ordination in the United Church. So I will turn things over to David now uh, to lead worship for us this morning. That's a little bit taller, right? I mean, I came in and I noticed that there's a podium and then there's another level of thing. Oh boy, there's even a flip down thing here. So I can go another three inches up. But thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Um, certainly on this August long weekend. I mean, I know there's so many different things we can do. It's a beautiful day outside today. Um, as Laurie mentioned, my name is David Faber, and I attend, or close to finishing up at St. Stephen's College. Been working towards ordination over the last uh, 10 years, believe it or not. And it's quite a journey, and those who want to know a little bit more about it, it, it takes a number of steps to get to where you want to get to, kind of thing. Um, but isn't that life? So, uh, just really want to thank you for being here. Uh, I also live in this area for fairly close to it. There, there is a bit of a noticing as well. There's a bit of a ringing. I don't know if the feedback. Can you turn it down, maybe just a smidge? Because I imagine that there. Oh, is that better? Yeah. You can still hear my voice okay? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I actually just live in Allendale, uh, about seven or eight blocks. I thought of walking this morning and, well, late night last night celebrating uh, my mother's 80th birthday. So I'm here and uh, really glad to be leading worship with you all today. So if you would please join me in our call to worship in the bulletin. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. There are no outsiders here among us. We have all been brought together by the redeeming love of Jesus. And let's continue uh, with hymn number 395 in Voices United. Come in, come in, and sit down.
unless there was someone who did such amazing things and said such amazing things that people asked, Who are you? Sometimes he said, I am the light. People who love the light follow the light. The light of God among us, neighbors and friends, welcome home. We continue together with our gathering prayer in unison. God, you touch our lives with mystery and hope. We come to this place today, ready to see your power working through us. Help us to be open to your word and to answer your call among us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> all right, we will continue with another great hymn, Come All You People, and Voices United, number two. Oh, that's what I thought so too. More Voices, number two. If you go to, if you go to Voices United, number two, it won't be there. There's a couple of them, actually. <laughs> I'll highlight the second one. We'll sing it through three times. Summer. 
Have you been doing something fun? Yes. I guess. What have you been doing? You forget. Have you been playing outside? Yes. yes. Been playing with some friends? Yes. Eating lots of ice cream? No. <laughs> well, maybe you could change that a little bit. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that, should I? Get <laughs> myself in trouble. <laughs> yeah, so halfway through summer is kind of the time to think about all the different things that have been going on in your life, a little bit of thinking about the friends maybe that you have and that you play with. And that's kind of what we're going to talk a bit about today, is all the time that you have with your mom and then the different games that you play and the different things that you do. And maybe playing with, do you have like cousins and other people that come? Do you play with other people too? You think so? What's one of their names? I don't know. Okay, well I'm very happy that you're here. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's kind of what we're going to talk about um, today, is halfway through summer, in that summertime, and just knowing that, you know, you've got maybe some school coming up in a little while, you don't have to worry about that yet, but that it is coming, right? And sometimes we need to prepare for things and get ready and spend some time with each other and just enjoy the summer. Are you, do you have any plans for this weekend? Are you going to do anything this weekend? Oh, Heritage Chase. <laughs> yeah, and what are you going to have at Heritage Chase? Snow cones, that's all I know. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> I would have a snow cone with you too. What are you doing? No. That's that. Going on a picnic. That sounds like a really fun thing to do too. And so those are all the really fun things that we do in summer. And so it's important to remember that we've got our family around us to help us out and to go and do all these fun things. And give people hugs, just like you did this morning, Joey. I have to share with you. Joey walked up and I was standing up here and he just looks and he goes, I just, hello, and then he comes up and gives me this big giant hug. And that's really nice to do. Yeah, yeah made my weekend, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for both of you coming up. Wasn't that, that wasn't too scary, was it? No. He can come up again, right? Yeah, sometime. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for coming. Snow cones and heritage days. That sounds like a Sunday for me as well, I have to say. So let us continue with our blessing of the children. We're going to do this together in unison, and I know they've already gone off, so I should have kept them here. But for those that are all still here, child of God, your loving parent, learn to know whose child you are. Grow to laugh and sing and worship, trusting in God's love. And we continue with our prayers from the bottom of our heart. I do want to share with you, I received a note from Anna, and uh, she had mentioned to me, one of your members of your congregation, Irene Fowler. Uh, she moved to Toronto a number of years ago, and I guess a number of you know her. She has been moved into palliative care in Toronto. And she asked that you hold her in her prayers, as well as her daughters, Lori and Linda. Let us bow our heads. Loving God, thank you for today. Thank you for the joy and the gift of life to be shared with one another. Thank you for this congregation and the love that it brings to all that enter its doors. In your name we pray, Amen. Our scripture sentence today, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit further when we get to the sermon in that time of renewal, as I mentioned it to the children. That point in summer, you know, we're kind of at that midway point. I know it's a little bit hard to believe that we're already here. I know I look out and I'm like, wow, we 
five weeks in September, and then, uh, <laughs> but here we are, and it's important to remind ourselves of that time of renewal, and to take a bit of that time and to be settled within ourselves and with our connection that we have with God. So let us continue with our hymn, There is Room for All. And this one is in voices, uh, more voices, pardon me, number 62. So the smaller hymn. But God said to him, you fool, 
This very night, your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. God grant us understanding of these and all lessons from the Holy Scripture. One of the things you learn as a lay worship leader and working towards ordination, I spend a lot of time, um, I'll say covering for ministers, sure, I think that's the right language. They go on vacation, things happen in their family and all, all sorts of things, and so I come into the congregation and find out different things are missing, like a headset. I had one time it came and folks couldn't find the Christ candle. And I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> that's an important part of service, what am I going to do? Um, I grew up in scouting. So I carry an emergency kit in the back of my truck. So I went up to, to my truck and got a candle and lit it. And it worked. <laughs> so time of renewal. That's what we're here to talk about today. Both of those scriptures talk about that love and that connection that we have with God and the significance of that. The one I'm going to focus on is the reading from Colossians. And it's an epistle. And I'm certain, you know, you perhaps know what this whole means letter. It was a letter that Paul had written. And that's back in a time, you go back several thousand years ago, and I do like to set some things into context. One of the many things I was taught by all the sorts of ministers around me who kind of shepherd me, if you will, through, through this journey. You know, they'd always say to me, David, you need to explain the context, because that helps people understand what was going on at the time and why things were being said the way they were being said. And one of the things, of course, back then, Christianity was in this really early days. You know, the Romans had taken over most of uh, that part of the world. And you had a lot of struggle, a lot of famine, a lot of strife going on within families' lives. Life was tough. You were lucky to live past six years old, the age of Joey. I don't know how old he is, but he's probably somewhere around that age. You know, like that's, that's if you made it past six, you were doing good. And if you made it to 40, that's, that was the average age of people who lived back then. And we take that for granted now. You know, we don't realize how difficult it was back then to live. So people are struggling. They're struggling with their faith. All sorts of different things are going on. Of course, there's constant wars. Right in that area of Israel, uh, the whole corridor, you had mountains to the, yeah, to the east. You had the sea to the west. And so it was a natural trading route. And what happens with trade? What's happening right now? People want to control it. And so that's what's happening. And so, that, so there was always a constant battle amongst people to deal with all of this. And so as after Jesus' crucifixion and then resurrection, Paul is inspired. And Paul is out traveling all around that area of the world. And he's visiting people and trying to really talk about the significance and the importance of Jesus. And the importance of, didn't really use the term back then, but of Christianity, I mean, as we call it now. But that significance. And so as he's traveling, you can imagine, I mean, he's running into people that really oppose him and oppose the, the followers that he had working with him. Just saying, you know, like, this is wrong what you're saying. We're going to eventually, you know, something's going to happen to you. Well, and, and it did. And this letter to the Colossians was written while he was imprisoned in Rome. And he spent a lot of time, a lot of those epistles were actually written as he was in prison in jail. Uh, in around 62 AD, uh, or CE, um, those, those, those were written. So he's sharing. He's sharing to the Colossians, which is a town in Colossia. And just to put it in context, back kind of in the day, if you will, that was referred to as Asia Minor. And Asia Minor today is a portion of the world. It's uh, basically Turkey and kind of that uh, whole area. And Colosia still exists. The town was destroyed in about 100 AD, give or take. I think it stretched out a little bit further. It was a major trading, trading area. And it's in the southwestern tip of Turkey, close to the Mediterranean Sea, about 100 kilometers. So it wasn't on the sea itself, but people would travel through in trade. It was a very well-known Persian trading city 
in its day in 300 or 400 uh, BC or BCE, using today's common language, but in about 300 or 400 BC, uh, there was a trading center. So you have some people there, and it's you know far enough away from Rome and what was going on that Paul was able to plant a seed and start the conversation. And this church had been formed. Uh, or a gathering, you know, not the sense of church as we understand it today, but people coming together and sharing in the worship of, of the Lord. And folks were becoming confused. I don't know if that's the right word, if, you know, I, I've done a lot of study on the theological side of things uh, around this, but you had a number of folks who were there, and they were kind of getting things on line between different religions, paganism was coming in as well, and Paul was concerned. A gentleman who was actually um, leading that church at the time, traveled to Rome and went and saw Paul. And I'm not sure how that all happened, if he was in prison, but somehow he got a message and said, you know, the, the folks in Colosia are struggling, and it's kind of going off the rails. What can you do? And Paul writes his letter, he writes his epistle, and he sends that. And he's really referring to in that epistle the importance and the significance of God and that we are all one. We are all the same. And you might have heard in that language and they use, you know, the circumcised, uncircumcised, um, you know, they, they refer to different groups. But that, you know, it's using the language of that time. What they're really trying to say is all people, all people are welcome. All people are part of our connection that we individually have with God, that we're there, we're present for that. And so that kind of, for me, it struck me a little bit reading that and saying, so what is it? What is it about this time right now in August? Here we are, you know, August long weekend. Thank you all for coming. I wasn't too sure how many would come. But it's, it's that time of renewal. That's what I found. At least certainly that's what it is for me. And that transition of the August long weekend, a lot of people are out, you know, you go to the lake or you spend time, heritage days, doing whatever around the city, spending that time with family, loved ones, traveling. It's really important. So that time of renewal. What do we do with that? What do we do? I often find for myself, I'm a father of two, now I guess I'm adults, 21 and 19, but to me they're still kids and they're still off going sideways every once in a while. On an August long weekend, a number of conversations I've had about parties out somewhere, I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, the usual that goes with that. Okay, you guys be safe. I want you home by one. Uh, rolls in at two. <laughs> Try not to get angry. <laughs> but it's that time, right, where, where people are just kind of just being in the moment. What else do we need to do? That might take care of our physical a little bit. But what Paul was saying is also taking care of that spiritual, that side of ourselves that we sometimes set aside. Or if something traumatic happens in our life, and we realize that you know, you're hurting, and you might be hurting physically and emotionally, but I bet deep down there's a hurt spiritually as well. And so, as part of this reflection, I thought it was important to mention the significance of looking at yourself spiritually. You know, as Paul was saying to the people in Colossia, you know, you are all one. This is a time of renewal. This is a time of sharing and being with loved ones, of affirming and reaffirming that connection you have with God, and taking that time that you have with one another. Because it's not an easy thing. I was trying to go through, and there's so many different stories in my life that a gentleman today was asking, said to me, so where are you from? And for me, that's a really, <laughs> that's a tough question to answer. I'm from so many different places. I originally am from Lausanne, Switzerland. I was born there. My family immigrated to Canada when I was about 10, 11 years old. We moved to Montreal. My father was a cancer researcher, and that's what brought us to Canada to work. He was working at the Canadian Cancer Institute. And so we came here to Canada, and through a series of events in my life, my mother remarries, I end up living out on a farm in Saskatchewan. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> the transition from Lausanne to Montreal, not so bad. Mountains disappeared, but hey, they're all speaking French. That was my first language. So I could fit in 
when I moved out west, and I quickly discovered speaking French sometimes wasn't a good thing. <laughs> and I know you're laughing, but I tell you, <laughs> it wasn't. We moved out west and spent time. My stepfather was a grain farmer. We had cattle to feed ourselves and pigs and chickens. And the pigs would drive me crazy. I hated pigs. They get out of the pig burn thing and oh, good luck ever catching them. They really are hard to catch. You ever had to do that? Chickens are easy compared to pigs. So we spent that time on the farm and I learned a lot as part of that. That transition growing up and lived in central Montreal. And I remember going to school and our playground was all paved over. We'd play handball, it was all asphalt, and trees were growing out of the asphalt. <laughs> it's a very different kind of you don't really realize what you have right, until you leave it. You know, you wait a second. And then we come out west, and there's all this space and green. And I'm by myself, no noise. Walk out in the night, no light but that yard light. You ever been out to a farm in the middle of the night? You just have that one big yard light on. But you walk, and you turn that thing off, pitch black, and you can see the stars forever. That connection, that renewal. That was there. And eventually made my way to Lloydminster of all places, and then been here in Edmonton, and as I mentioned, I live in Allendale now. Now I'm standing before you. So I'm sure we all have those life stories of, you know, where are you from, and what are all the connections that bring you here? But it's important. It's important to remember that teaching that Paul was trying to share, and sometimes in language, I must admit, I sometimes read a bit of those and I go, ooh, uh, uh, it makes me feel a little squirmish, some of the language that's there, but it's important to remember to take things in context. Sometimes I find people will lift something out of the scripture and say, look, I'm right. It says right here, this one chapter, this one verse, this is what it says, this is the answer. It's not how it's meant to be. It's meant to be read through. If you recall, they were actually originally were written on scrolls. And you couldn't just jump to a point and say, ah, here's the answer. You actually had to read it all the way through and understand that context. So with that, that's where I'd like to leave things with you today, is to think about, perhaps it is that context of your life, the context of that setting of yourself and the faith that you have. I know it's busy, you probably all have plans after this, and certainly tomorrow as well. But spend that time reflecting on your faith and how that connects with you and the importance that God brings to all of us in our lives. In the name of the Lord, our God, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is in Voices of the Night. I'm just double checking myself in my own room. 371. Open my eyes that I can see. Really good. Please rise to read.
have some memories for me. My current home congregation of Riverbend, we ended up sponsoring a Syrian refugee family in Clapham. And there were 11 children. It made me saw a little bit, but I, I love kids. So I was always volunteering to help out with the children. One of the things I learned really quickly is how to say stop and come here in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> that was chaos. Kalyan and Liat, I guess you remember. Music and laughter, hands and minds, curiosity and compassion, one of the kinds of gifts we all have. All these gifts are symbolized with our offering. Let us commit ourselves to service as we worship God and continue with our prayer of gratitude and concerns. Let's bow our hands in prayer. The Lord, we are here today amongst friends and family, those that maybe we don't know but need to know. We pray, O oh Lord, for our world in a time where information can come at us so quickly and at times it feels overwhelming. We pray for all of those that struggle in Texas and in Ohio. We pray for them and their families and the suffering. We pray, O oh Lord, for those that are unable to find shelter and those that go hungry at night, those that are incarcerated and don't have someone to hold them and give them a hug. We pray, O oh God, for our families, those that are traveling on the road and coming to visit or going to visit them. We pray for safe journey that they get to where they need to in a safe way. We pray humbly for ourselves that we look inside, find that connection with you, O God, and nurture, be kind, be gentle with it. Appreciate that we are all growing and learning, no matter our age. And we pray in silence.
<laughs> so enjoy today. Because today is what we have. Today is what is here for us right now. Tomorrow's not here. Yesterday's not here. It's today. So remember that. Lord our God, accept the prayers and love of your people. In your great understanding, look with compassion on us, and all who turn to you for help. You are gracious, O lover of souls. Go forth, for the love of God is yours to share. The peace of Christ is yours to extend, and the power of the Holy Spirit is yours to offer. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and in love and in light. Amen.